Welcome to episode three of Vertical Conversations. So fam. <laughs> What's up, fam? <laughs> Uh, this is a, an opportunity for those of you who are with us for the first time for uh, us, some of the pastors of Vertical Church, to sit down and have a casual conversation with each other about something that we think is important, something that we, we want to communicate biblical truth about uh, in a way that's intimate and accessible uh, during this time that we're unable to be with you personally. Um, so hopefully, as, as you guys are joining, hopefully you saw the post earlier and you're preparing to comment with your favorite, right? Is that what we said? Favorite movie? Your favorite movie, which is different than the best movie it's, of all it's time. It's not different. You see, Joe, Joe and I have a long-standing it's, debate it's different. about it, whether there's a difference between the best movie of all time there and, is a difference and your favorite. Explain why, why, why it's different. Your favorite movie of all time is personal the best movie of all time should be decided by society at large. <laughs> <laughs> so I would think that the best movie of all time, you would you could instantly narrow it down just based on movie of the year winners. And then yeah. go from there. Yeah, when I ask somebody, <laughs> what is the greatest movie of all time, in your opinion? I'm asking them a subjective question. If you said in your opinion... Then That's asking, not asking. I'm not asking you, have you read the statistics and what you think society <laughs> at large thinks about the movie? So I think it's one of the same. Because if you say, this movie is the best, there's no other movie better than this one. Uh, and, and then you go, well, that's not my favorite one. I like this one, even though I think this one's better. That, to me, doesn't make any sense. But anyway, what is your favorite I'm right, and movie? you're wrong. It's fine. No. It's not a big deal. Just accept it. My favorite movie of all time is currently... The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which no one else will ever say is the best movie of all time. It is good. It is great. Um, Decent. Rebecca Casper, no doubt favorite and best movie there is Emperor's New Groove. Totally. I, I can't argue. I love That was my favorite for a very long time. Uh, I like that she sees the both being synonymous, but I, I disagree. My, my dad, and, and I told you he was going to do this. Um, he he says we should be we should be talking about the second best movie of all time because the first is objective, which is what which is his favorite. Movie. Oh, of course, <laughs> thanks, Jack. Uh, he said, any if you have a movie that starts off with a prayer to God uh, and ends with "Hark the Herald Angels Sing," what movie is that? Haven't you seen the Passion? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, it's it's a Wonderful weird. Life. This is all time I, favorite. I don't, I don't even like that movie at all. Why? Because yeah, it's sad and depressing. Yeah, I just, <laughs> man. Christmas time, I'm trying to. You know, no, I like it. it. It's a family tradition. Yeah, he has a, like a poster in his office and everything. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mine is mine has become one that Joe's introduced me to. The Quiet Place. Yes. Uh, I think it's probably my favorite right now. It's Jamison definitely is, number two. It's pushing number one, honestly. Yeah. Depends I mean, on the mood, kind of. The concept is unique, mm -hmm. and the way that they were able to pull off a largely silent movie and make it thrilling and exciting. I thought it was really cool. Plus, all the like they're promoting, like uh, the value of life in the movie. Yeah, uh, which big is time. Willing to even risk death for the sake of and, preservation of yeah. life, unborn life, and all those. I don't want to ruin it, but all those pictures of like self sacrifice uh, that really echoes Ugh, the dude, greatest so story good. ever it's told. So good. All right, let's see what we got. Brandon Keen, Braveheart. Have not seen it. Um, someone unite us. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Jerry Maguire from Mary Matter. Not seen that. You complete me? No, I've not seen it. Wow, yikes! The Equalizer. I know you love that movie, uh, right? Isn't that Denzel? Uh, that's not, I like Denzel. Denzel, I'm a fan. Okay. I don't know if I've seen that one. Book of Eli, Mary, coming in strong. That's my number three. Joe made me watch that movie, and I did not. I did not enjoy it. I love that movie. It's so good. It's about the Bible. Uh, kind of, yeah, I guess. Pretty much. Uh, the Bible and ex extreme violence. Yes, it's so. a little too gory and violent. Yeah, you didn't like that for, for me. My wife. Lord of the Rings, they're kind of long. Yeah, way too long. If I'm being honest. Uh, but I feel like kind of guilty even just saying that. Um, I think that's what we've got right now. Equalizer, both are great. There must be two equalizers. I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Hannah, Hannah says both are great. Can't do enough. <laughs> Your wife says my favorite movie is 
da 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 da. Because you don't <laughs> know. Like my wife hates movies, television in general. She just has no interest in fashion and, and watching any any of it. So like surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally none. None of it. Like you're probably picturing when he says that like she just like doesn't enjoy it. But what he means is like she will not do it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, there's been like probably two occasions since we've been married the past like almost 14 years, where I can remember her sitting down and, and it was just for me. It was just like, all right, fine, I'll do this <laughs> for your sake. Yeah. So that's, I watch that's movies. kind of. I right? watch my movies yeah. by myself. Yeah. Uh, Man on Fire. That's that's definitely a classic. Um, my dad couple old old movies the sting like, like the, the wrestler robert. Mm, no yeah <laughs> the, the face paint this <laughs> robert Redford and paul newman no. it's like uh, a con artist kind of movie it's actually good but it's very old bridge over the river Kwai. dad come up with something current yeah so that we can understand yeah, in the past like 60 years <laughs> <it'd> be, it'd be... <laughs> oh he's gonna call me after for that um <laughs> All right, should we should we move on? Sure. All right, as we as we head into our conversation, we'll get a little more serious. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, apparently the way to make sure that people in our church, even people who have liked the page, can see this is by sharing it. So, uh, if you guys wouldn't mind sharing it, so that we can try to get this hope what we hope is a resource out to all of our people. Um, I guess they went to a paid format or sharing instead of you just had to like it. Yeah, yeah as far as I understand, yeah. I don't know a ton about it, but we're we're all obviously experts. Yeah, kind of the Facebook Facebook world. Yes, the Facebooks. Um, so tonight we're talking about entertainment, um, how to view that in light of our identity as Christians, um, and also you know in light of the craze of. Tiger King and <laughs> other various garbage shows. <laughs> uh, so maybe we can maybe we can interact around uh, why we're talking about this. Yeah. Like why why would we spend another another yeah. point? This is this is going to be much more brief than last week. Uh, we heard your feedback. Yeah. We're we're gonna try to keep these forty five minutes ish or, or maybe a little less. Yeah. Uh so we're we should not be as, as long but but why would we spend this time talking about entertainment? Um why does it matter? Yeah. I think I think generally, uh entertainment when you think about you know, social media, sports, gaming, movies, television, it's a large part of of each of our lives. Uh, Huge. And so I think it's I think it's important for Christians to give some thought to how do we navigate that big piece of our lives in a way that's healthy and the way that honors the Lord. And I think more specifically right now, uh, the reason we're talking about this now uh, is because uh, I think given the situation with you know coronavirus and everyone kind of being under house arrest, if yeah, you know, we're all stuck at our homes. Uh, the you know uh, the internet entertainment cons- consumption has just skyrocketed, and even people that maybe wouldn't normally sit down and binge shows are, are doing so and trying to find you know. Ways to fill the time, other than Tiff. Other than Tiff, she she's still, still not there yet. Still yeah, maybe in a couple it. months. I don't I don't know. Um, so I felt like it was really uh, a timely to to think about. Okay, how do we make choices and and think biblically about what we are choosing to to consume as as Jesus followers and how that might you know, impact our, our lives and our witness, etc. Uh, and and plus, I think another reason is we realized that last week was. Uh, a bit heavy and, and, and dense, and so we wanted to switch gears a little bit and deal with something that's a little bit more accessible for everybody yeah. and um, extremely practical too at yeah. the same time. Yeah, super practical. Um, and as you mentioned, this is something that, that all of us interact with. So what, what role has entertainment played in your life up to this point? How has it sort of ebbed and flowed? Yeah. How have you viewed it? So my earliest years, I would say I wasn't I wasn't the type of child that had a, a massive amount of interest in like sitting around and playing video games or watching a lot of television. I was definitely the outdoor child, mm-hmm. um, and if there was any gaming, it, it usually in some sort of social setting. Right. I didn't have any interest. But as I got older, obviously became uh, more interested in various forms of of entertainment, particularly movies and TV and that sort of thing. 
Um, and as a growing up as a preacher's kid, uh, I mean, I had my steady diet of Veggie Tales and Touched by an Angel, uh, <laughs> for sure. And I grew up in an environment where, uh, by and large, not everyone, uh, there was a, a kind of really clear line uh, that was drawn between what they would say is, is secular entertainment and, and sacred, right? So sacred entertainment was anything that was like had the uh, Christian label slapped on it, right? right. So. Christian TV, Christian music, and that was all appropriate. And then uh, there was the secular stuff, stuff that didn't mention Jesus or wasn't about uh, Christ and, and that sort of thing. And 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 a lot of people viewed that as something that was kind of off limits. In fact, I can remember on more than uh, this one occasion where a uh, youth pastor was, you know, preaching about how we shouldn't listen to anything but Christian songs and. And even some of the Christian songs that were coming out were, were suspect. When you're in right. Jesus Freak, it's like, I don't know if this is actually oh, Christian. Man, so, um, so we all, you know, we sent a song, we all gathered together our CDs and stuff, and all the ones that weren't Christian and threw them in, in the trash. Didn't burn them? Uh, we didn't burn them. I've heard about that. You know, Apparently you there's them. like pretty bad fumes if you, if you burn them. Yeah, I, I don't remember ever burning them, but I remember we I brought them to you group and chucked them in the trash. I explain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, dude. Um... But I mean, think over the years, you know, that they tended to kind of lax up on that. And as I became an adult, you know, I realized that that sort of dichotomy was was a false dichotomy, and that, you know, um, maybe not the best way of looking at how, how we think about art or entertainment uh, between the secular and sacred mm -hmm. sort of divide. But I didn't, I still didn't have like a healthy understanding of of how to navigate then that space. And so I probably swung the pendulum too far the other side and thought, well. I'm free to, to watch and, and right. consume whatever I want. And, and I don't know that that was um, the, health, the healthiest thing for my sanctification or my own personal walk with the Lord. And I, I regret, you know, uh, choosing to spend a lot of time and hours and uh, entertaining myself with things that I think weren't the most, most helpful in my life. So I think there's, you know, I experienced uh, entertainment has been a, a negative experience in a lot of ways uh, for me on both sides of it. Like this, mm -hmm. the Uber mm -hmm. kind of fundamental uh, religious legalism to kind of watch whatever you want yeah that stuff but yeah yeah for me um my parents were pretty strict growing up you know i didn't watch a pg-13 movie till i was 14 that kind of thing nice like you want to add one more year different. yeah i don't know if i probably because my sister was younger and they just Makes sense. we did everything together so it wasn't yeah you know, so she got it early and i got it late i guess um so i and you know we had sort of like time limits set on uh, screen time and things yeah. like that. Um, but I loved video games and, and such a nerd. Yeah, I was, I was, <clears throat> I was a really big nerd. <laughs> Not anymore, obviously. Uh, no, I, I have always been a nerd, uh, and I did. I, I wasn't allowed to have video games, but anytime I was at a friend's house, yeah. that's what we were doing. Um, most of the time. I mean, we obviously played outside a lot, played a lot of sports. Um, but then, uh, I guess when I was a senior in high school, my parents let me get a PlayStation, and I spent hours and hours every day on it uh, for my senior year. And then I didn't play uh, for the first few months, a couple months of college. That was the deal that my parents made with me. Like, you go to school, you Do some don't work. play video games. Yeah. Uh, and then once things were going well, they sort of, relax that rule a little bit and um but thankfully i you know i didn't ever go back to where the way it was <laughs> my yeah. senior year because it was not healthy uh it was just um constant and then uh on the movie side of things that's that's something that i i feel like i've seen uh good and bad obviously i've, I've had experiences like you talked about where i watched a movie that you know out of a, a sense of freedom that I could, uh, that I shouldn't have watched, um, because it, you know, for, for whatever reason, it, it was just, it was a bad, like, sin, you know, it was sinful to watch it, uh, it caused sin in my heart, or if, if it seared my conscience toward, toward things, um, but then on the flip side, you know, my, you know, watching movies with my dad has been, one of those things that I can I can remember from being little and and even now when we spend time together, although not obviously recently because yeah COVID, but um when when we go back for Christmas or something like watching It's a Wonderful Life around Christmas time or, or things like that where our family comes together and we have good conversations yeah afterward and we're excited about um you know sort of the 
the beauty that we see in it because I think that's one of the things that we'll talk about is um, like appreciating the, the creativity and mm -hmm. even some some messages that inadvertently I think in yeah. most cases point to biblical truths um, and so we can talk about that I think those are the best movies that tap into yeah. that sort of greatest story ever told kind right of thing. <clears throat> right and I think that's what you're talking about with a quiet place a little yeah bit. Um, yeah so definitely have have sort of two sides of the, of the coin as far as entertainment is concerned in my experience yeah um, and then now I think with you know having Lucy we're trying to figure out obviously we we don't give her a lot of screen time because she's yeah. nine months old but even thinking ahead to when she's yeah uh you know when we're trying to keep her quiet or something how do we do that is it just here watch this mm -hmm. um and if so why and if not why uh, those kind of questions are, are what we're, we're thinking ahead about right now yeah yeah um so why don't we talk about some of the dangers and and benefits but let's start with dangers what are what are some of the dangers of entertainment um, yeah, I think that, that, that come to mind for you. Well, one of them is, uh, entertainment can very easily become just a means of escaping, um, in a very negative, negative way, yeah. uh, that when we experience pain or sorrow or hard day, um, or whether there's relational tension or whatever, instead of maybe dealing with those feelings or even taking those cares and burdens to the Lord or reconciling whatever, the easier thing to do is like, I just want to disengage from reality and, yeah. and, and escape uh, from my life or my problems or whatever. And it can become a, a kind of a functional savior uh, in, in a very bad way. Yeah, I think the, the phrase that comes to mind when, when I think about that is, I just need to watch some TV. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just need to play or I just need to, yeah. to zone out for a minute. Like, at least in my heart, in my mind, when, when, I, when I, I've said that, I've said that to my wife, I've said that to myself, I yeah. just I just need to do this. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's when I. Yeah. It, it, thankfully, you know, it's become like, oh, I'm not going to do that because yeah, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Because that's I think what I'm doing is escaping. I'm running to that for rest or, or to get away. Yeah. Uh, instead of running to Christ. Yeah. I've definitely done that. I mean, there's been yeah. times where, it's particularly, I can think of examples where Tiff and I are in. We don't have we don't argue. We have heated dis discussions. Not using our inside voice. <laughs> Uh, you and, never argue. No, 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 no just no. Yeah, yeah, just right. that. Right. And uh, and and I just like I just don't want to deal with this right now. And then she'll hear me click on the TV or something, you know. But she's pretty quick about like, are you serious? <laughs> like you're gonna just sit there and watch TV now? Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's definitely a, a a real temptation and a real danger that entertainment can have on us. I think yeah, other but ones, for some reason it's more acceptable than like I'm just gonna walk out the front door. Yeah. Even though, in this in the sense in in your mind you're doing yeah. the same thing. You sure. shouldn't. I'm closing this off. Yeah. 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 Another one I think we, we were kicking this around earlier, the uh, how it can desensitize us mm -hmm. to to sin and things that really grieve the Spirit of God. Um, in fact, I remember hearing Kevin DeYoung uh, tell a story about when he was in seminary um, ages ago, like when Jack was in school or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said they went to see the Indiana Jones movie when it came out. And... Um, and they're sitting there, a bunch of seminary students, and there's this one scene where um, you know, Indiana Jones and his dad uh, realize that they're both sleeping with the same the same woman. Yikes. Uh, neither one's the other, their wife. Um, right. And it's meant to be this sort of funny ha-ha moment. And he said, you know, a lot of them laughed, including Kevin. He said, you know, I laughed. And one of the, the guys in the group kind of, you know, re reprimanded them, rebuked them, and said, like, this isn't, like, funny. We're talking about incest and right. fornication. And we're finding that amusing. He said at the time, everyone was like, "What? Well, yeah, this dude, right? <laughs> Come on, yeah, the killjoy yeah. over here sermonizing us to death." Uh, but he said later, like reflecting back on it, he realized that there's probably a little bit more truth than he than he realized yeah. um, in finding uh, amusement and entertainment in things that are abhorrent uh, to the Lord. And he didn't realize how maybe desensitized he'd become to to some of those things. Yeah, and I think if you think back, well, at least. You know, in my experience, like I can think back to things when I was 15, 16 years old. I wouldn't have watched, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't have, t I would have been like, no way I can watch that. Yeah. Uh, that's unacceptable. And now it's like a Tuesday. You yeah. Know? Um, it's, and so you can see the small decision. And it wasn't like I went from zero to 60. It was yeah. like I went from zero to one. Yeah. And just that one, then I went to five, you know? Yeah. Uh, 
sometimes you don't realize it too until like uh, I think Channel talks about like innocence is in the room or somebody mm -hmm. that you would be embarrassed to know that you watched it. For example, I remember there's there was I don't remember what oh, movie yeah. it was. Yeah. Where I I thought it was a great movie. Like looking back, and I was like, I love that movie. I've done this, so and then times. I was showing my parents, and I, as I sat there with my father, you know, I'm like, this was a really bad idea. I didn't realize it was this. Oh man, one time I was, a, I was a chaperone <clears throat> on like when I was in college. <laughs> I was a chaperone for a youth oh, man. choir tour, and uh, the the adult chaperones put me in charge of getting the movies for the bus. Mistake one. Mistake number one. Yeah, and. Uh, I blew it. Yeah, just totally blew it. It was lang it just language like instantaneous like in the first five seconds of the movie and I didn't have any recollection of it. Yeah. 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 So, what are some other dangers that maybe you thought through? Yeah, I think um one one of the big ones for me is is um just uh sorry, I lost track. Um Getting into a, a place where I am more uh, controlled by entertainment, by what I what I want to consume, than I am by by God. So uh, it talks about two masters, and, and the reference there is money, but I think it applies mm -hmm. to entertainment. I think um, one of the articles I was reading today on Desiring God talks about you know if you we 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 pay. Uh, for most forms of entertainment, um, some of it is free, but but we we in some ways are are paying for for a lot of it, and we invest in it, and we invest more time in it than most other things, um, and it can functionally become our master. And I think that goes back to the escape a little bit. Um, but if I you know if I'm faced with with a, a chunk of time. And I think I could spend the next five minutes I've got free. I could spend that praying, mm -hmm. or I could scroll through Facebook. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I can really easily get to the point where where praying is no longer even attractive to me, um, because I've conditioned myself to enjoy uh, the temporal pleasures of Facebook or a, a YouTube video or mm -hmm. you know America's Funniest Home Video. I love America's. Some videos. I do too. That slaps and it, it gets me. Jam. It gets me every time. I can I can waste, uh, you know, fifteen twenty minutes an hour just just on that, um, and and so I think just allowing myself to be controlled um, by those things to for those to be my master mm -hmm. uh, instead of allowing Christ to be my master, I think is a huge danger for me. Yeah, um, and it goes you know goes back to that sort of addiction almost kind of mentality um, that that is similar in a lot of ways to, to escaping mm -hmm. uh, those same same sort of yeah. traps. Yeah. I, I think too that uh, this, I think one of the things that makes entertainment uh, so dangerous is that a lot of times it's it's not so clear clearly yeah. black and white or wrong right. or right. Um, I think sometimes the, some of the most detrimental things to our Growth and holiness and our spiritual uh, vitality is good things mm. uh, that can take place of better things because it's not so easily obvious, yeah. right? So if I'm, you know, uh, drinking, you know, uh, hard liquor for four hours a day, well, that's obviously right. a problem. You right. know, like, okay, bro, something's up. But this is kind of a socially acceptable mm -hmm. way to, to do things. And, um, and it can easily, uh, although it might not be inherently wrong in of itself, detract us from something that is way more valuable right and I was thinking about that you know, that, that, that classic story you know with Mara, Mary and Martha and Jesus and yeah uh, Martha was doing good things right but uh, because she was so busy so distracted doing things uh, she neglected the one thing that she needed most and that was communion with the Lord and I think it is telling like you're saying uh, sometimes if we think about uh, how easy it is for some of us to to binge watch shows and how difficult it can be to find time to actually communing with, with the Lord, which I think is in some ways revealing. You know? Yeah, I mean, the, the number one excuse for for not spending time in the Bible is just, I don't have time, I'm too busy. Yeah. Um, but we've got time for our favorite shows, we've got time for Facebook, we've got time for our favorite sports team. I think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at least at least for me, it's been, you know, I'm, I'm a huge Braves fan. I love Atlanta sports, I love everything about them. Yeah. And I, and I support them and I do that. Um, but at least you know, and I, and I feel like I've grown. God has grown me in that, 
to, to come out from I, that being an idol. Um, but that's definitely something that I've struggled with. Um, so we got some we got some commenting going on. Uh-oh. Let's see. Oh, my dad showed me. What? Talk about frequency. Have you uh-huh. seen that movie? Uh huh. Oh my gosh, dude, it's terrifying. <laughs> we watched it on the way to the camp when I was like nine years uh-huh. old. It was. T- it's about some guy getting murdered. I don't remember. It was terrifying. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, I think another thing with I was just before yeah. we go on to that positives, uh, discontentment. I think can be a yeah. danger. I think sometimes sometimes entertainment, depending on the form, can can breed dis- discontentment. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, I, we probably all sat in a situation where maybe the, uh, us personally or with our wives, we for example, we sit down and watch uh, like a fixer upper show. You know. Yeah. And you like, man, what the incredible things they do. And then right. you look at your house like, my house is garbage. <laughs> you know? You're like, I'm, I'm yeah. such a, a loser, yeah. you know? Right. Um, and so sometimes I think... Uh, yeah, they did that for $10 in Waco. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I think the other thing... Um, I, yeah, and I, I need to share that article that I read today because I, I thought it was so, so valuable. Yeah. Um, but just the danger of, of not understanding what's happening or not not being aware of what's happening when we consume entertainment Mm -hmm. um the way we're we're learning things and we're just accepting things that we may think uh we may not even be aware of we're introducing ideas into our minds and our hearts that are sort of just just coming in unfiltered um whereas if we're if we're in a classroom setting or if we're hearing someone speak or reading an article maybe we're being more um conscientious maybe we're being mm-hmm. more uh, careful to filter and, and to hold things up to the light and, and see yeah. what holds up to that and what's not um, but when we when we're being entertained the the whole point is to not be thinking about it um, but what we don't realize is we we are thinking it's just a passive form of just receiving yeah all the the ideals that are being put forth um, and so I think that can in itself be a danger just that we that we just receive whatever is given to us in yeah. that form. Yeah. So what what are some of the the benefits of entertainment? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> God, no, no. you mentioned one. Talking about your dad and that sort of. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's a big one. That that the idea of fellowship. I think they they give us a gathering point um, in, in our lives. There there's something to to get together to do together that you can then interact about and. And I think there's a way to do that that's really beautiful and God honoring, yeah. and and um, enables building relationships. Maybe I know you mentioned uh, sort of a, a missiological aspect of it too, of that sort of gathering point. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's important. I think if we're going to see ourselves as as missionaries sent by Jesus to live in a place that doesn't embrace mm. all of our ideals and beliefs and uh, values. It's, I think it's, it's helpful to know what are the prevailing ideas and opinions and values of the culture around me. And different forms of entertainment can be ways of, of really seeing those clearly uh, so that we can in, engage them better and even be able to engage them using some of those those platforms as like mean, means of connection. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree 100%. I also, in my own life, have used that as a crutch. Yeah. When I So... so sort of like a caveat like be honest with yourself I, I, I don't do that always uh, very well sometimes I can I can justify my, my way into yeah. doing whatever I want but I think there's real value in um, taking those so the Super Bowl is a great example uh, instead of just huddling up by yourself to watch it if it's your team uh, mm-hmm. inviting your neighbors over who don't know Jesus and, and using it as an opportunity to get to build that relationship sure. and yeah. And to lay some some groundwork for for future conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think not only be honest with yourself, but I think uh, I think is where important where you know community is really important in helping us discern sometimes even the own intentions of our heart. Yeah. Um, because sin is deceitful, yeah. uh, and and so we can easily drift into being maybe overly lax or really just trying to justify our own behaviors. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to have other people weighing in and, and checking on us in, in that yeah. regard too. But I've seen it that play out positively. You know, heck, I know that uh, many many sermons I've used, uh, you know, movies or you know f- forms of art or, or whatever as as ways to illustrate gospel truths. So and I think there's a bit of room for that and contextualization. And I think there's a way to do it right. I, I was even I was uh, telling uh, Joe earlier, uh, John uh, Wilson, if you yeah. watch him, what's up, dog? <laughs> 
uh, was telling me about how there's a couple of key movies that he really enjoys that present some kind of kind of highbrow philosophical ideas um, that he he loves to to get some people together from you know some of his colleagues uh, and and just interact with and they watch the movie and then they talk about they talk about it and he's able to to interact with that idea or, or whatever's going on um, from from the Christian worldview which I yeah. thought was a really cool that's awesome cool way to, yeah. to kind of approach it yeah what's another benefit potential benefit of entertainment that we that we could see in the world yeah you hit on this earlier uh, and that I think uh, entertainment can enrich if done properly our appreciation for uh, the giver of, of all gifts and the God of all creativity. And so when we see beautiful art or we listen to great music uh, or we watch uh, powerful stories played out on television or movies or read, read it in books, uh, it, can, it can really enrich our appreciation for the God mm-hmm. who's behind all, all that creativity. Um, and, and so I think that's another... Yeah, yeah another the, 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 the person that we're all, all humanity is imaging. Yeah. Right, even... even even those who aren't following him still are made in his image. Yeah. Uh, and so they still have, can, can point us that way. Um, yeah. And I, I think uh, one of the things I, that I, I thought was helpful uh, in thinking through, like, you know, is, there a hel- is there a healthy way to even interact with entertainment? And, uh, and I think the answer is yes. Uh, does it have a place in the Christian life? Yes. But not, not all of it. Right. I think, uh, <laughs> I would say there's some forms of entertainment that, do, that have no place in, in the Christian life. Um, and uh, one of the kind of frameworks that I, I thought was helpful, one pastor said there's kind of three R's that we need to keep in mind as it relates to cultural engagement. Uh, and that there's some things that we can gladly receive, uh, just wholesale and, and celebrate, even if it doesn't, isn't it particularly Christian? I think about like a classical music or a beautiful canvas, you know, the landscape. Well, obviously there's nothing... Doesn't, just because I have a cross in it or just because it doesn't mention Jesus right. doesn't mean that uh, it isn't a gift of God's common grace that we can celebrate and, and embrace wholesale. Yeah. There are other things that we just need to all out reject, right? right. Um, that are, that have no place, that are, there's no part that's, I think, redeemable. You know, I think about like a clear example of pornography. I wouldn't right. say, well, you know, this is something that well, we can could be fine for some reason. Um, yeah. And there's other parts that can be redeemed, right? Yeah. So there's maybe there's elements of it that are untrue, but there's also uh, truths that we can affirm while while rejecting some of the the non-truths that might be present, you know, within it. So the three R's. Uh, so receive, reject, and redeem. Yeah, are the, yeah. the three R's. I think that's helpful. So what what does the Bible say about entertainment? When I Google entertainment in the Bible, yeah, <laughs> surprisingly no verses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so not much. <laughs> If, if by that you mean, uh, what does the Bible uh, have to say? Does the Bible mention some of the particular forms of entertainment that we're accustomed to in the 21st century? There's no verse about TV shows. No, there's no, there's no <laughs> chapter and verse that you're going to find that says... You uh, shall watch Secret Life of Walter Mitty. You can Mitty. watch Secret Life of Walter Mitty, binge watch The Tiger King, uh, play cards, watch a baseball game. You're, you're not going to find those things. And so I do think we need to be uh, about careful that we don't overstep here and lay sort of these uh, legalistic blanket condemnations where the Bible hasn't. Yeah. Uh, however, at the same time, while the Bible doesn't address uh, you know the issue of Pokemon Go explicitly or you know what shows are appropriate for a Christian to watch on Hulu, it does address these things implicitly or mm-hmm. or indirectly. Right. Uh, and so the Bible has a lot to say about entertainment in that sense because uh, it's full of principles and commands that can be applied to. Our entertainment choices and a, and a whole lot of other kind of gray areas of Christianity. Yeah, yeah. So what are some specifics? Brandon King's asking, uh, and we'll we'll get to that probably before we end. But what are five? What are practical ways of filtering properly when engaging with entertainment? So don't let me forget. Yeah. That we want to interact with that. Um, but do you have any any particular Bible passages that you wanted to bring up? Well, I think we're going to bring up some as it relates to. What principles or commands are clear in Scripture, and how does that apply to, okay. to entertainment? Okay. Uh, so what are some of those principles that we can apply? Yeah, and so this kind of, I think, gets to Brandon's questions of like how we filter yeah. those decisions and how we make decisions about what, what is helpful to consume. And the first one, I think, is, uh, it's not really a principle, we'll call it a principle of obedience. And as we really have to ask, is this actually 
a gray area. Is this really a judgment call? Or does the Bible actually explicitly condemn this thing uh, indirectly? Mm-hmm. Um, or directly. Or, or directly, right? So like the Bible doesn't, you know, same thing if you say, can you know, show me the verse that says a Christian can't do meth. Well, <laughs> I, I don't have a verse that mentions meth. Right. Uh, at all, but it doesn't mean the Bible doesn't have anything to say about it. It yeah. does address the issue of of meth or other, you know, uh, illicit drugs or whatever, uh, in in those prohibitions against drunkenness mm-hmm. and in the call to sober mindedness. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it does uh, address it. Right. It just might not spell it out directly. And so we have. I think that's the first step. Is we have to really be honest about uh, is this uh, an issue of conscience or judgment call or a, a matter of Christian liberty, mm-hmm. or or is it actually clear uh, whether this is wrong or or right but once we get past that is it sinful is it lawful uh, peace I think then comes the the principle of of conscience Mm -hmm. and and that is uh, can I uh, engage or listen or watch or or, you know participate in this thing with a clean conscience before the Lord and as an act of faith yeah Uh, because Romans 14 uh, says that um, that there if we have doubts, uh, or if we have a, a guilty conscience about doing something, and we do it anyway, even if that thing isn't inherently sinful, it is sin for us. Yeah. Because anything that does not proceed from faith is is sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 so an example would be, uh, let's say that you came out of, of Mormonism, the cult of, of Mormonism. Uh, as far as I understand, they don't. Maybe I'm getting confused, but as far as I understand, they don't do coffee, right? Because. Um, Caffeine, right? They would say those same principles about sober mindedness and all that apply to caffeine. It's a drug. It alters your state of mind, and so therefore Christians uh, should not, you know, uh, for, you know, have a cup of a cup of Joe okay. in, in the morning. And so, say you come out of that and you've now embraced the true Christian gospel, but you're still not sure that it's appropriate for a Christian to drink coffee. Uh, for you to say, you know what, I'm not sure, and I think this might be wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway, uh, would be sinful. Mm-hmm regardless of whether drinking coffee is sinful or not. Not because of the action itself, because the heart behind it is driving those actions. Yeah. Because what you're saying in those moments is, I think this might be wrong. I think this might grieve the Spirit of God. I think this might be an offense to my Savior, right. and I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. So right. that's what makes it makes it wrong. Right. I think most people get there. Right? Mm-hmm. I think most people are like, all right, is it, is it sinful? Can I do this with a clean conscience? conscience we're good. Um, but I think we have to go further than that because the Bible calls us to. And so the third kind of grid or principle that I was thinking of was the, the principle of, of wisdom. Yeah. Like, is it wise? You know, Paul would say in, in 1 Corinthians, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. Not all things are helpful. Not all things are, uh, are wise. And so just because you can doesn't mean, doesn't mean that you should. Right. Um, and, and we have to be honest, like, is this really helping me uh, become more like Christ? Is this really helping me be a greater witness for Christ? Is this really a, a positive thing for me emotionally and, and all those different things? Uh, in fact, I was reminded of that video, that sermon jam. Uh, we're going to get into this passage in a couple weeks, Hebrews chapter 12, uh, those first few verses. Yeah. Man, Piper's got this sermon jam video that has... There's uh, not a lot better than a Piper sermon jam. No, dude, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It gets some yeah. music behind oh, it. Man, oh, uh, man. And, and he's, he's talking about this, those first couple verses where it says, let us lay aside the weight and any encumbrance, right, or, or, or weight mm-hmm. that would keep us from running well. Uh, and he says, the smallest question that the Christians ask usually is, is, is it a sin? He said, that's such a small right. question. The question isn't, is it a sin? That, that is a question. We've got to get there. But the real question is, does it help me run? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think, Ugh, dude, yeah, I just think about dude, just, it. Yes. the music behind it, dude, right. you get chills. Right. Um, like, it does this help me become more like Jesus? Uh, does this help me finish the race well? Does this does this help, or or is it actually hindering me? Yeah, and I think that's where what we talked about earlier, where being honest with yourself and having those people who are going to speak into your life and say, "Hey, bro, like that's not that's not doing it. That's yeah. not helping you run. That is not wise for you to be." Uh, consuming that not, not yeah. wise for you to be entertained by that I think that's a huge part in there because I think that like you said the obedience and conscience is pretty straightforward I think most people are, are cool on that but yeah. then the wisdom piece is, that at least for me is where it gets real challenging sometimes to not justify it for myself because I want it right, right? because I still want things that are not yeah. God honoring yeah yeah um 
principle is the principle of worship. Mm. Um, like, does it glorify God? Uh, because Paul would say in, in both 1 Corinthians 10.31 and, and Colossians 3.17, uh, like whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, including entertainment, uh, do it all for the glory of God. And so we need to really ask ourselves, can I glorify God in this? Um, Kevin DeYoung, his book, we, we did this a couple years ago, The Whole Inner Holiness, yeah. Last year. phrases it a little bit differently. He says, can I thank God for this? Mm-hmm. Um, like, so when it comes to like entertainment or activity or, or whatever I'm doing, uh, can I get down on my knees after I've watched the movie or whatever and say, man, I thank you, God, for this amazing gift that I have enjoyed yeah. to your glory? Uh, because the Bible is clear, whether it's we're talking about a glass of wine or a, a Big Mac or, or a movie, that we're to do everything uh, in, in a way that, uh, that honors honors the Lord. Yeah. And, and I know these are questions probably don't want to ask sometimes because we're probably scared of the answers being no. Right. But right. I think these are, are real questions that that we cons- should consider. Another thing that I was thinking of was the principle of love. Right. Um, and so you've kind of moved from can I and then should I and then if I yeah. engage in this, what is the, the impact on the other people uh, around me? Like, yeah. is it kind? Is this the most loving thing I can do for uh, the other people God placed in my life for, for my neighbor? And I realize that's like, uh, that sounds strange and kind of, to the typical American mind where we're told constantly, uh, do you, like, you know, if someone else has a problem with it, that's their problem. You know, right. that's, not, that's not your problem. You just yeah. worry uh, about yourself. <laughs> um, but here's, when you become a Christian, like, you, you forever surrender your right to just do you. Right. Um, and you, you now, like Jesus, you have to consider uh, others around you. Looking Which out is like a huge part interests. of why we are staying in our homes yeah, right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Philippians 2, right? Look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. That's right. the way of the cross. Right. Uh, and so one one practical example that I thought of that I've encountered over the years is, um, you know, having, you know, uh, say say you have no issue with a particular show, right? Uh, you're like, man, I feel like this isn't prohibited, and I can do this with a clear conscience, I can do this with the glory uh, of God, uh, but your wife... I doesn't feel like it's appropriate. She yeah. really makes her uncomfortable for you watching it mm-hmm. uh, in the house. Uh, you don't watch it, right? Not because you know <laughs> she wears the pants, um, yeah. but because that's Why? that's the call uh, yeah. of love, right? Yeah. Uh, love always trumps freedom, and so you know our, our our rights always come into subjection to our responsibility to love others. So whenever those two are in conflict, freedom uh, and love, we always. Always choose love because that's that's the way that Jesus chose how to live. Yeah. Quick question from Stephen Casper. First, he said you are correct. Mormons don't drink coffee. I knew it. Second, why do you think it's so easy to believe that Jesus won't fill us up or satisfy our hearts the way entertainment will? It's so easy to think rest means being a couch potato and binge watching The Office. And if I'm being honest, I'd much rather do that when I have free time than open the Word and study or serve my family, etc. Hmm. Yeah, I feel you there. Um, yeah. I think we've all felt that pull. And I think the reason why it's so enticing is because I think the sinful nature that we've inherited in Adam is real. Yeah. Um, and so there is a real battle going on between our flesh and our spirit. What we feel sometimes, we, what we think will satisfy us, and what we actually know based on the truth of God's Word will bring us ultimate satisfaction. And so we're constantly having to bring those those feelings and those thoughts in subjection to Christ and taking every thought captive and saying, no, that's not true. Right. Like, I know that's not true. Yeah. It's proven again and again, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't actually satisfy. It doesn't actually bring lasting comfort and rest. Yeah. And so I'm not going to believe that lie, uh, but I'm going to to, to, per, to pursue what God has, has called me into. Uh, and sometimes we do that do that well, and other times, other times well. we don't. Um, yeah. But I think that's probably the reason why sometimes it it feels so strong yeah we had a couple more points we we thought we might get to but we are how time gonna gonna cut it off there um next week we're gonna get back on that real easy light and breezy (laughs) definitely not ruffle any feathers train and we're gonna talk about money so uh i hope you guys are all very excited about that no uh but actually we you know the bible talks a ton about money because it knows that uh god knows that that's something that 
we are going to deal with in our lives and um, so we're, we're excited to interact over that yeah I believe Pastor Scott I think so I'm calling you out bro here. you are now so you better be uh, here bro uh, so we'll get to hear from our our uh, XP yes. executive pastor the bishop um, so thank you guys for tuning in uh, please continue continue to send in your questions we've gotten some great questions this week uh, that we're, we're excited to 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 talk through at some point uh, we're trying to get through yeah uh, everything that that we that we want to and, and think is valuable um, and so we're excited to to interact with some of those questions um, Brandon Keen I usually try to say to myself in those moments talking to, to what you just spoke to Jesus is better than fill in the blank I think yeah. that's a that's a great uh, truth to keep in mind for those moments um, but until next time Wash your hands, you sinners.